you have a bag. This bag's actually designed to hold USBs. So it's supposed to hold your USBs that you use, NIC 300s, spectrum analyzers, whatever you want. It's specifically designed so you can put in the middle of it a USB hub and keep the NICs live all the time. You just zip it closed, take the tail out, and there you go. Which means if you're running a survey tray, you can stick it on the front of your survey tray. Or if you want this to go on your machine, you just put opposite Velcro. That's its first design. Second, if you're ever doing outdoor surveys, it has a little pocket in the bottom. There's a little sleeve in the very bottom where I put my finger. This little sleeve is designed, you take like a, a, ma a bar magnet or what I take is a popsicle stick and I glue a little uh, neolibium high end, high rare earth magnets on it. And then I can put this on the roof of my car and I can drive 100 kilometers an hour, 150 kilometers an hour, and it stays stuck to the roof. So when I'm doing a survey, an outdoor survey, all of my NICs and my GPS and my spectrum analyzers are outside the metal box of the car when I'm doing the survey. So same, same little case made to carry your things, made to be done in a survey. You can also use it for outdoor. Additionally, on this side, it has these things called Molly, M-O-L-L-E. And they're designed to go on backpacks or any other thing that's molly based like your little backpacks you have these are molly these are molly and what you do is you feed them in and out and in and out and then this stays stuck to the front so that's what they're designed for additionally this is sized perfectly to hold a netscout g2 air check so if you want it also to carry your air check, it's an air check. So multi, multiple uses for one little device, specifically designed for the things that you do in your job. So you might have just thought it was something to hold your Odroid. Oh, yeah, it holds the Odroid too. So that's this little device, just your little bag. Inside your bag, you should see one of these guys. That's what we'll be spending most of our time with. Note they are all assembled. My fingers hate you. There's little teeny screws inside here. There's four of each of them and they have two sides. That's eight per and my fingers screwed them all together. So this is, well, you. You, did, you did some of them. But between Fernay and I, we did all of yours. Um, this is a 3D printed case. Last year we tried, uh, we had no cases in Budapest. In Phoenix, we had a really cool case that was smaller than this, and we thought it was the coolest thing in the world, and we had it down. We took videos of it. We knew exactly how long it took, and we didn't expect that 250 people would take 45 minutes to put a case together. So this year, you don't have a choice. They're sealed. They're assembled. Every one of them was tested before we put it in here. There's a little piece of plastic on the front. You can leave it on or take it off your, your call. Anyway, so inside these is a battery. To one of you don't have the inside battery, you have a little tube battery. We will be giving you the right batteries. The problem is um, Amazon shipped the wrong size and then they shipped the right size. And then I flew here and then the right size ones arrived at the office. So they're at the office right now. They're just not with us. In the meantime, you have the little ones. They work just the same. The idea for this came, uh, a guy named Jerry Ola. Blake and I were at a, what was that thing, Blake, in, in Minneapolis? Where'd Blake go? Oh, anyway. Uh, Blake and I are at this, this training day in Minneapolis, and Jerry says, you want to see this really cool thing I have? It kind of runs iPerf on a little, it was just a little single board computer. Like a uh, Raspberry Pi, it's running just a, a Linux distribution, little teeny single board computer. The problem is run, with running RPIs is they don't have gig ethernet ports. And to really do a throughput test, we don't want to test the speed of the RPI because it's not going to win very much. And especially when you run it through a 10100 port. So we found a, a USB based little silicon single board computer. One, it could run on battery because we wanted to have this as you could move it around and place it. Uh, if you'd like, you can run this off a of PoE. There's little PoE injectors that switch it back to the five volts. You can do that. 
but we want one to run, run battery, we want to be able to run throughput tests. And over the last 18 months or so, working with Jerry, we've come up with better and better firmware. Last year in Budapest, we tried this, there was no screen. So we spent 45 minutes trying to figure out what your IP address was. There was a whole process, you put this little thing in, then you shut your eyes and said, I can't see what's going on, please download, download, and when you were done, you had no idea if it worked or not. So we had stations where you could go plug in and try to see if it worked. These, much easier, we have them down. Uh, the big trick, if you ever want to, the whole trick that made this work, was we went from 32 gig SIMs, the little cards we put inside here, to eight gig. We went smaller. And the cool part about going smaller is, we don't have to build the image, and that's what we did in Budapest. We built slowly the, the OS. Here, at eight gig, we can image it. And there's software on your USB called Etcher, like you're gonna scratch something etch. Etcher, both a Windows and a Mac version, that we use to etch or burn the image onto these. Underneath, if you open them up, that's not how they open, but it's a good sound. Uh, when you open them up, there's a little EMMC, a little chip. It has an eight on it under a red sticker. That's the chip that you have, and you just pop it out. In your kit, you also received a card, and the card is a reader that reads SD. Taped to the card is a little teeny EMCC to SD adapter. So if you ever want to reburn your EMCC, EMMC, you put it on this and put it in here. The reason we're giving you the actual this transcend one, it's one of the only ones I found in the world that works. It, it's not just any old SD for what we're doing, the way we burn it, it needed a special and this one's set. So you have a full set to, re, to reprogram yours how you like. Since we started burning these, we've went from version 0.08 last year to when we did Phoenix, we were 0.1. We got to these that you have are 0.13. And in the last two weeks, after we burned 90 of these, we are now up to 0.1.5. Very slight modifications, but during our testing process, it was like, hey, Jerry, what if we, and he's like, I can do that, and we added it, but we'd already burned all yours. So if you'd like the latest and greatest, we can get you the latest and greatest image. It's a very slight differences. It just allows for, uh, well, actually, I'll show you when we get to that part. So you have this is for you not to use today. If you ever want to reburn yours, you're going to open it up. If you open it up, you will need this little Allen key. Because in the bottom, there is an Allen wrench and an Allen screw, and you put them together. You don't so have you will need to manually take them apart if you want to get access to that part. You don't have to do it right now, please. Yes, please don't do it right now. <laughs> there is also a stylus in there if you want to play with this. The stylus just came free with it. Uh, there is a USB power cord. Same cord can be used to charge your battery, or if you hook it in the other way, it can power up your Odroid. Now, we're going to use that in a minute. Uh, we should have had most of the Odroids, the, the battery should have had at least half a charge, which would be good enough for our lab. If you need to, the, the case has a little finger pull. You pull it out and push. You can get the battery to come out. Ta-da! So if you did ever want to replace the battery, that's possible without opening the whole case. Um, we have the screen this year. Yay! Additionally, before we get started, other things are at your table. At a table, we have a little MicroTik router. This is a router, four port switch. One even has PoE, um, one. Two, ra two radio Wi-Fi, all in one little box. But because we didn't want to like crazy wire up this whole place with power, there's a little 12 volt battery to drive it. So the 12 volt battery just plugs in and the thing says when you turn the battery on, we have lights. So these right here represent your target network. So when you go home, this is your home network. When you're at the office, this is your office network. It's just representing a network. 
in this classroom when we're doing this test, this is going to represent terrible Wi-Fi. It's not a great AP, and there's going to be 50 SSIDs going on in this room. And thus, the airtime, when we run our test, the airtime is going to be terrible. It's just a process. We want to get you through the process so you can do that. So this represents your network. The ports represent plugging in wired ports. We'll be using both wired and wireless along the way. Your old droid also came with a little Wi-Fi NIC. When the Wi-Fi NIC goes into one of the ports, this becomes an access point. So this is multi-user. You can use it for lots of things. Unplugged, you plug it in Ethernet. It is a end point for testing. And that's what we're going to be doing most of the labs today. So we have labs pre-done that you're going to use this for iPerf 1, sorry, iPerf 2, iPerf 3, ePerf, HTML perf, uh, I forget all the other ones, uh, Zap, uh, all available on the same thing. So we have Okay. Now, we, we didn't give these to you last night because we didn't want anyone playing with them in your hotel room. Uh, one more thing. These are not for you to take home. Okay? Oh, thank you. These yes. stay here. This is for the lab. We use, them at, we use them all the labs. So this by itself is an end point to test to. It's also a Linux computer. It also does things like if anybody running uh, Adrian Granados, Adrian Granados makes some great tools. One of his tools is Wi-Fi Explorer. If you have Wi-Fi Explorer Pro and you put this Jesus in Christ. and you hook it up to Ethernet, you can leave this behind at a customer site or anywhere you want and with Wi-Fi Explorer, talk to it. It becomes the eyes and ears for Wi-Fi Explorer. So you have a remote sensor all in the same little box. If you want, you can plug an Ethernet port in one side, put the Wi-Fi NIC in there, and this is also an access point. If you want to play, run it that way, it, it has that ability. On the front, if you look at the very front, it has four buttons. The buttons are assigned certain features, basically just to turn stuff on and off. The top one turns it, the screen on and off. Sometimes you won't want the, you know, you might just leave this in the data center. Uh, somebody I say, where's Blake? Blake's got, I think, four of these in his home lab. He has one hooked up to his Ubiquiti stack. One hooked up to his uh, Meraki stack. And then whenever he wants to test something, here's an end point to test to. So that's what we're going to do from a lab standpoint. Um, let me bring this up on the screen. So we chose the Odroid because it has gig port. It also has four USB ports. It has HDMI out if you'd like to hook HDMI out. We added the screen, so the thing you need most on this is when you plug it into, wi into wired, what's its IP address? And we're having an exercise now, you're gonna test your IP address. So, there's the reason you can also hook it up to Bluetooth with a, or a mouse. It's really easy to hook up keyboard to it, HDMI, and you have a computer ready to go. The tests we're gonna run, iPerf3, iPerf2, Zap, Ekahau ePerf is a customized version of iPerf that <laughs> understands that when you roam, you're going to drop packets. The other iPerfs, when you roam and they drop packets, they go, I'm done. <laughs> and it kind of ruins the whole reason you're doing the test. So Ekahau has a version of that. And then we have a whole bunch of HTML5 tests that, like you're going to do a speed test on that, you can use any tool to do it. You can use this and leave it behind at a customer site, and they can test their own network. And you put this right behind a AP, on the same switch as the AP, and they can test their own with their own handheld devices all the, whenever they want. We actually have, I think, six different versions of HTML for you to play with. Uh, for now, I think you had a question. The client applications we're going to look with are, for depending on the OS, you can get iPerf, Zap, Akahau Wi-Fi Perf is a demo from a company called Access Agility. On your USB stick, you have a demo of that. It's from Zabe Kalim. It's his company. It's just a nice front end to iPerf. Uh, Ruckus Speedflex, available Android and iOS. Depending on, sometimes in different country codes, you will, your, I, your iTunes store may or may not let you download those. 
Uh, Hurricane Electric is available everywhere. It has both iPerf 2 and iPerf 3, and we can test those on your handheld devices. Uh, for, oh, wrong button. The iOS for Aruba should be under Android. My mistake. Uh, but Aruba Utilities also has a perf tool. If you had loaded all of these before you start the performance testing, if you had followed the instructions last night, you'll be ready to do, go ahead and do the labs. So first of all, to power this on, you will need, oh, this is yours. I don't need to borrow yours anymore. A um, couple of things. Sorry, questions. Um, each one of those routers will have four available ports. Ports two through five. You don't have to be at the table with it because we have three people here and, and one, four, or five. Just make sure you plug in your Odroid to one of those ports. You don't have to be at the table with it, okay? But don't do it yet. There's a, Not yet. There's, we're gonna do it Just together. Got, okay, so install battery, it's called Coral is the one who does it. Uh, when you plug it in, it may start automatically. If it doesn't, there's a little hole in the side here that you can push the button once. It will turn the battery on. You push the button twice, it turns the battery off. Very nice. So for the battery, you can use the battery there. It also runs off of any USB powered thing. So if you don't want to use a battery, you just want to live any you know, cheap little USB charger. Uh, works fine. So what we'd like you to do on this first time is not even touch your Odroid yet. On your table, if you look on your little device, on your little microtech, it should say, mine says table 15. What does yours say? Table one, okay. If you're on table one, now, if you make a mistake on this, you will not find your Odroid, I promise. Because if you try to join the SSID table 15 and your Odroid's plugged into table one, guess what? You're gonna get the right IP address not even on the same network. So first thing you do is you're gonna to connect to either the 2.4 or the 5 gig SSID. If you, when you turn your micro ticks on, they'll be broadcasting out. I expect right now when I show this on my screen, we should see a boatload of table, 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 tables. So for whatever client device you want to test, if you're testing Mac, take your Mac, Join your table, either two, four, or five, but they both go to the same place. Same for whatever table. You can use your Mac, your PC, your Android, or your iOS. It doesn't matter, we're using, a, it's just the clients. And then write down your IP addresses. They're gonna be 192, 168, 88 something. Each little microtech has more than enough spaces. Next, after you have your clients and you know what your clients are associated to, then do the same thing for your Odroid. You're gonna take your Odroid and plug it into one of the ports that's not port one. We have little teeny cables. Plug your Odroid in, make sure it's turned on, and you don't even need to have it near you. Just plug it in. There's space on a table that's near you. Find one, plug it in, and when you have all these things done, and just this piece of information filled out, then we'll move on. Go ahead. <laughs> Remember, don't use port one. Someone, you need to mic off because you get feedback oh. as soon as you go out past the speakers. I understand, yeah. Maybe it's on the
Okay, while you're plugging those in, when your Odroid comes up, you'll see it go scroll, 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 scroll. You can see that now because you have a screen. Last year it was scrolling and you had no idea it was doing it. When it's done, it's going to ask for a DHCP request. Your little micro tick will give it back an IP address. Then write your IP address down here. And hopefully, all of those are in the same subnet. OK, your Odroid doesn't even need to be near you. It just needs to be plugged in. In the real world, you'll stick an Odroid in a closet someplace. It's just the endpoint. And the only piece of information you need off your Odroid is the IP address that shows up on the first screen. So as soon as you have an IP address on your screen, raise your hand. OK. Some of you are not done yet. We'll give you just a couple minutes. This should be the easy part. Do you need a? It has a what? <laughs> just try password. You're taking yours apart. You want this? No. <laughs> just goes. I mean, if you want to take it out, that's the fast way. They need to be plugged into your micro ticker. They're not going to work. The labs won't work. OK, next section. Depending on if your Windows or Mac, I'm assuming everyone already has an IP address. You wrote down all your IP addresses, so this next part's going to be easy. You're going to log in and SSH into your machine. If you're a Windows user and you use PuTTY, use PuTTY. On a Mac, it's really easy. On a Mac, just put in SSH, root at your IP address. The password is WM Pro. In your instructions, so if you do these at home, we've added this little thing saying you can change your password for root. I suggest you don't do that in this room today. Because if you do and you forget it, we will have to re-image your machine. So if you know for sure what you're going to put the password, the default is WLAN Pro, and it works for everyone. But from a security conscious standpoint, if you don't want anyone else hacking your machine, they can look over and see your IP address. They could get in. You can change it. OK, as I feared, we're all over the map now. So let's just pay attention for just a second. You don't need to follow along anymore. Once you have your Odroid connected, it has an IP address. You can SSH into it. You can watch what goes on from both sides. You can do everything now from the client side. Your client is talking to the MicroTik via wireless. Coming back, talking to the Odroid via wire. You're controlling your Odroid via SSH into it. You can make it do whatever you want it to do. The rest of all the labs are you taking a client and making your Odroid do something. It's, a, it's an end point for doing tests. So just do the lab on your own. The last couple of labs at the end need your Wi-Fi NIC put back in them, and you'll need to add the Wi-Fi NIC. So to turn it into an AP, you'll need a Wi-Fi NIC in it. To do the Wi-Fi Explorer Pro, it needs to have the Wi-Fi NIC in it. And so until then, you don't even need those in there. Those are just the last two. You should be able to go through your iPerf 2, iPerf 3 from the command line. Zap from the command line. Those are the first two labs. Lab three is doing YPerf from a GUI. If you don't have the YPerf app, skip the lab. It's just, it's just one more way of looking at it. Using SpeedFlex is going to be on iOS or Android. There's a second lab with SpeedFlex going from Android to Android or iOS to iOS. 
or iOS to Odroid. Doesn't matter, Odroid works all those. Lab number five. Sorry, that was five. Five was uh, using uh, 18 network tools. That's easy to download, comes from Hurricane Electric. There's both iPerf2 and iPerf3. You can talk to your Odroid with that one. Lab number six is using Aruba Network Utilities. If you don't have Android, you can't run that lab. If you have Android, go ahead and run that one. <laughs> Seven is going to use Zap from client to client through the Odroid. Eight is now using a browser. Everyone can use the browser. If you hit this Odroid's IP address from a browser, you will get a speed test. We've added six others. If you don't like the way one looks, Try another one. The difference is, and you, it's kind of hard to read if you want to look on this page, is for additional tests, add, hit the web, the IP address, AAAA, slash example one, example two, example three, example four, and you'll see what the other options are. These are the easiest for your end users because they're used to seeing speedtest.net, but this one, unlike speedtest.net, is actually testing the real wireless, not the whole internet. On uh, the next page is how to turn your Odroid into an access point. You can play with that and let it just be an access point alone. You can tell that this access point's running because part of the exercise is now use it, get different IP addresses. The Odroid will give you out .44 network addresses. And then the last exercise was on your client page and it's to do Wi-Fi Explorer Pro and use it as a remote tool. And if you used Wi-Fi Explorer Pro from uh, Adrian Granados, you'll love it. It's just a great tool. You can leave it behind. So for the rest of this time, as long as you like to play, you have instructions, you have toys, you have all the pieces. Enjoy. If you can't get something to work, ask your neighbor. If he can't get it to work, ask your other neighbor. If your entire table can't get it to work, then ask for an A. And if Renee can't get it to work, then nobody can get it to work. <laughs> Enjoy.